So Ben Carson, good guy, I think he's 11 or 12, and they're saying, Carson, here's the headline, Carson surging. I said, what about me, where's my name? I'm at 40, where's my name? It's only the second time round for GOP hopefuls to try and convince America they're the only choice to run America, but it's already make or break for a majority. No one can figure out why a doctor with zero political chops is gaining ground. Carly Fiorina could be all in or definitely busted, depending on her performance. And hey, wasn't there a Bush in there someplace? Let's dig in. Welcome back to The Hardline. Veteran Republican strategist, contributor at Ricochet.com, Politico, The Federalist, and right here. Also, the man who claims I aim to misbehave, which in light of this political season and what we've seen so far is about as dead on as you can get, Rick Wilson. Rick, good to talk to you again. All right, let's go ahead and dig into this right away. Is this a knockout punch possibility for Donald Trump, or are some people in the media just really needing to back off a little bit? It's so early. I think everybody, I think everybody expects way too much of all sides of this equation of this debate. I think folks that think that, that, that any individual candidate is going to come out and lay the knockout blow on Trump don't understand the dynamic between Trump and the media right now. I think that anybody that thinks that Trump is going to knock any of these other guys completely out of the race at this point just by a debate performance are also off, off base. These folks have winnowed themselves down a little bit. We're going to see more winnowing down. You know, we've got Governor Perry out of the race now. There's a bottom tier here that won't be back. To, to, to visit with us again. There are a couple candidates on the stage this time that won't be back again. All right, let me stop you right there then. Who's out? Give me two or three names that, in your opinion, are gone after this debate. Christie and Santorum, I think, are definitely gone after this debate. I don't think they've got the staying power. I don't think they're going to... I mean, Christie, Christie's lucky he had a few polls ahead of him or behind him in the CNN poll where he still had some decent numbers. This is really the end of the line for him. And I think we're going to see, uh, as I said, Rick Santorum out of this. Um, and look, some of these other guys will stay in the race. And, and, but you and didn't bumble. say Scott Walker, though. And a lot of people feel that this is Walker's out right here. Listen, I, I think that Scott Walker is, is a guy who people expected a lot from. I don't think he's met all those expectations. I don't write him off yet because Scott Walker is a guy who's been written off a lot of times and come back from the dead. So I think that we're going to see an awful lot of drama between the, the, the mid-tier guys uh, all trying to make a name for themselves. I would encourage them all, you know, go up, post up against the Donald, bring a little humor to the table this time. Don't try to make it a, uh, an indictment. Try to make it a little bit of mockery. The guy's more thin-skinned about when he's being taunted than when he's being accused of being a liberal or having liberal positions in the past. Which and, that has. Sounds to me, and that sounds to me like Carly Fiorina is the one who can do that more than a Ben Carson. And I think you're absolutely right. I mean, look at that ad she put out this week and her response to Trump. It was probably the best thing we've seen in the campaign season so far because it was so... It was so perfectly encapsulated. It didn't make her look angry. It didn't make her look bitter. It didn't make her look like she was upset. It just drew a beautiful contrast, and it got back to the to an audience that, that Donald Trump is frankly weak with, which is Republican women, and Carly Fiorina sees as a very good aspect of her campaign and a way for her to make a real mark in this thing. Okay, i got 30 seconds left. Are we overestimating Ben Carson, and why, and where has Jeb Bush gone? Ben Carson is the super ego of the party. He's what everybody wants a candidate to be in some ways, that public servant who isn't a politician, that's got the great heart, great mind, um, you know, great ethics, great conservative values, but he's still not a politician, he's still not a campaigner, and at some point he's going to have to be. Jeb Bush, is, they, they've, they've committed some real money into the campaign today. He has had a lot of trouble with Trump being in his brain. He needs to get out on that stage tomorrow night and remember that he is a very conservative governor with a very successful record. And he needs to have a little fun. He needs to not be the guy who seems like he's, uh, you know, uh, at, a, at a college uh, tutorial somewhere. He needs to have a little more fun, uh, a little more frat party than college tutorial. And, uh, and give Donald Trump a couple of swipes uh, in, in a lighthearted, humorous way. Ten seconds. You want to give me a perfecto one, two, whom you hope comes out on top? I'm really hoping to see Carly Fiorina and Marco Rubio do well. I think they've both got tremendous potential in, this, in, in the debate. They're both very, very poised in debates. And they are this. They, they're they're two whose numbers betray um, uh, less about their actual position in the campaign than their talents indicate. They're talented folks, both of them on the debate stage, and I think you're going to see that tomorrow night. You're really thinking that Marco Rubio is going to get back in, aren't you? Marco's never been out, man. He's just running his own game.
You know, and that's the interesting thing about Marco, because I think you and I have talked about this once before, and I really think that this is it. I think his people are just laying back saying, look, let all the flotsam and jetsam of the world just go ahead and pass us by. We'll wait until we get to a point where we can sort of open things up just a little bit and then get to what they're doing. But then again, we're going to find out tomorrow night. As always, it is a great pleasure to talk to you. My friend Rick Wilson, we'll catch up with you real soon and guaranteed we'll be talking about this for a long time to come. We will. Thanks, my buddy.